Brooklyn Independent Television. on the roof of our office's first green building design. We are developing this project as a example for the community to see what technologies are available and help foster the growth of the green industry. I've been involved in the architectural profession for 25 years. During that period of time, however, the quality of construction was not up to what I felt was the standards that I believed in. So I decided that as a, an example to others, I would construct a building myself to show how a building should be produced today. This project is in the Brighton Beach section of Brooklyn. Brighton Beach had been my home for about 15 years. I'm a native Brooklynite. Brighton, unfortunately, happens to be close to the Atlantic Ocean, and it was very severely impacted by the Storm Sandy. This entire neighborhood was under anywhere between two and five feet of water when the surge came in. This particular building had two and a half feet of rushing water around it. We registered during sandy sustained winds here of 50 miles an hour with gusts 90 and 100 miles an hour. We actually had no water infiltration at any one of the windows and doors in this building. And I think that people going now back to repairing and rebuilding after the storm really need to understand that they can't go back to putting things in the old way. They need to put them in in a way that will mitigate damages in the future and actually prevent damages. The 100-year flood elevation was about three or four inches above the natural grade. Our obligation to comply with that was to bring the building up four inches above the grade. We chose to raise the building up an additional two feet above that level because we felt that over the coming next 20 or 30 years, with global warming and rising of the ocean, that that 100-year flood wouldn't be a realistic height. And obviously, unfortunately, to our uh, correct assumptions, it wasn't. And if you see on the building here, there's a water line of where Storm Sandy came up to on this building, which is about four and a half, five inches below the level of the new first floor that we established. We were actually the only property in about a 25 block radius that was unaffected by the storm. And I believe that has a direct result of the elevation increase that we did, as well as technologies we did to make this building air and watertight. After Sandy, it made clear certain obvious things that people have been avoiding. This building being here and setting that kind of example says how a building should be built beyond the whole concept of high efficiency. The fact of the matter is that within the next two years, tradespeople are going to have to know the ropes. This is how the buildings are being built. I believe the storm was a wake-up call for a lot of people, the city especially. There's been a lot of discussion about the vulnerability of New York to global warming, and a lot of the architectural community has spent the last 20 years trying to get that message out. And I think Sandy basically, if it's anything good that came out of it, will be that it accelerated this discussion by probably uh, at least five to 10 years. The enhancement of the environment is not only a reduction, but also a regeneration. A mature praying mantis of about eight or nine inches in length decided for some reason make this place his home. He stayed around for a good few months and we're hoping that kind of interaction with nature continues. Watch this and other Brooklyn Independent Television episodes online at brickartsmedia.org slash BIT.